All right, what's going on YouTube? We're gonna do another build update. Changed a couple of things around. A um, couple of things you might notice is headlights. I don't know if you can see the center caps. Finally got those on there. <clears throat> and some window tint. And a couple other things I did underneath. Uh, so first things first is the headlights. These are truck light clones. They're not the real truck lights or the rigids or the GEs. They're cheap eBay ones. Um, they are not bad. The low beams are okay. The, the light is spread good to the side and the low beams are kind of low. Um, the light is really low here on the ground and it kind of fades dimmer as you go on, but high beams are pretty good. <clears throat> um, I'll turn them on real quick and show you. So this is the low beam, which is the top. It's not too dark out right now camera probably doesn't pick it up but it is pretty good light Let's see if I can step in front you can see a little bit of it there but that's the low beam we turn the high beam on it keeps the low beam on as well which is nice so there's the high beam overall pretty nice I like them Alright, next thing I did was these center caps. I found these on eBay for like 18 bucks. Um, they are 3.18 center bore, which is the ones for these. These are the Trailmaster TM5 wheels, uh, 15 by 8s. So those aren't the Trailmaster wheels, but they're kind of like the satin finish, so they match. Came out pretty good. Like I said, four of them for 18 bucks. Uh, what else? Oh, window tint. So the front two are rolled down, but I did 15% all the way around. Finally got that done and it came out pretty nice. Took the stickers off the back window. Looks a little cleaner. Um, trying to think of what else I did. Ordered a bunch of the switches for the center console switch panel. As you can see right here. Ordered uh, six red switches. Right now these are wired with the little 12 inch light bar on the bumper. I want to separate those. And I'm going to get a light bar for the roof. So that'll be three sw three switches. we got light bar, pods, and the big one on the roof. The other three switches are I'm going to do rock lights. So that'll bring it up to four. I'm going to do rear lights. Bring it up to five. Then I have one extra. I don't know if that'll be something else. Like always. I'm thinking about doing like the fan override. And I'll probably put that switch on there. Uh, like a different color, I guess. When it, when it lights up, different color. Um... So that'll be my six switches. So I think that's all for the stuff you can see. For the stuff that you can't see, what did I do recently? I did, the big thing I did was the rear main seal. Uh, we were driving to Tossahatchee uh, Wildlife Management Area, which is a nice area here in Central Florida. Uh, we get about halfway there and I'm driving down the road and I just see a little bit of smoke behind me. Not enough to know it was me, maybe just dust on the road or whatnot. So kept an eye on it for another minute or so and then I realized all right it is me so I take my foot off the gas I'm doing like 65 miles an hour take my foot off the gas to slow down and all of a sudden a huge plume of smoke flies off the back and I can't see any traffic behind me so I'm like freaking out I got my wife and my three-year-old with me I rip off the side of the road and get them out and I look underneath and it's coming from the exhaust pipe that comes right off the headers and uh I knew the rear main seal needed to be replaced because it did leak um, in the driveway. I always had a piece of cardboard or an oil pan underneath it to catch it. So I knew it needed to be, needed to be replaced. It did come with one. The previous owner bought one, never put it in. Uh, so I looked it up. It's actually not that hard. Four Wheeler Magazine did an article on it. I followed their article and then Bleep and Jeep had one on there. So followed their article. And it's, it's not bad. I mean, I'm pretty inclined for technical and not technical but mechanically inclined tools and stuff so it wasn't that bad the only thing that freaks me out was hammering out the top half of the o-ring once you get the oil pan and the girdle off and the, the cap off the bottom one was fine i tapped it out and uh, came right out with first couple taps and it was in rough shape um, the top one i could not break loose i bent I bent one punch and I broke the tip off another punch. 
Uh, I was trying not to hit the, the part of the block that it goes into, so I, uh, I ended up using just a piece of steel, like a small bar. I don't know how thick it was, but uh, I just gave it a good whack. And I've, I've been under there for about an hour trying to get it out, and I was trying to slightly tap it, but I couldn't get the punch to stay on the metal bar that's in the, the, over, or in the uh, seal. If you know what I'm talking about, the, the seal is like a half circle, and there's a bar in there to keep it in shape inside the rubber molded. But I was trying to keep it on there, and I couldn't. It kept going around it. So I finally just put a piece of steel on there, gave it a good tap, and it came out. And I was able to grab it with my fingers and pull it right out and slip the new one in. One thing I found that I'm, I think made it better was when you do the rear main seal, you have to take out the two, the uh, bearing cap where the rear main seal actually is. So those two big bolts have to come out. And what I found online was the next bearing cap up, if you just break those bolts loose, it takes pressure off the off the uh, rear main seal, the upper half, towards the back of the engine. So I think that's what helped. Um, that took me probably about 12 hours to do just because I was taking my time doing some other stuff. Um, I did the Feldpro oil pan gasket while I was under there. That was a big job. Um, yeah. Hasn't leaked so far, knock on wood. Been running fine, no issues. I mean, it does still leak because it's a Jeep. Um, I don't know where it's coming from. But it, see, that there's nothing under there right now. Um, it used to drip, you know, within 30 seconds of turning it off and getting out, it used to have a couple drips. Now there's, I think it drips a couple times a day, maybe. So, it's a lot better than it was. Um, the other stuff I did, oh, I redid the U-joints on the rear drive shaft. The, uh, I'll put a picture up here of the old slip yoke from the previous owner. They decided when they broke the channel on the slip yoke that the old clamp or the clip goes into, they decided to weld the, the uh, U joint cap right to the slip yoke. I'll put that picture right here. But, when I, you know, obviously, when you're going to replace the U joint, you can't reuse that, so. Found another slip yoke from a friend locally. Swapped out both of the uh, U-joints. Runs great. Um, AC still works, no problems with the snorkel. So, my only real issue now is I need a track bar. Still. Um, and alignment, obviously, when that's done. And front differential. The gears are starting to get a little chatter. I don't know if I need to tighten up the yoke bolt or the yoke nut or whatnot on the front axle, but when I roll forward at a slow speed, maybe 15 miles an hour, yeah, I get some chatter in the front axle. Now this is a low pinion, so if I'm gonna swap it, I'm gonna do a high pinion. Um, if I can find a good condition high pinion that I just slap in there, that'll be good. I can take these hubs are brand new and brakes are brand new, so I'll swap all my good parts over to the high pinion. But uh, I'm really not wanting to spend almost $1,000 to redo a low pinion. Thing to 30. Um, but I want it to be reliable, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, so far it's, uh, it's coming along great. There's a couple WM, uh, WMAs, wildlife management areas, that are opening up their game trails here soon now that the hunting season is over or about to be over. So we're going to be going out there with some uh, other Jeeper people and we're going to have a good time. But uh, I'll post that video when we go in there. Thanks.